The best is to have an energy system that not too much need to be stored because it causes extra costs. So flexibility uh, in the demand is a key. Uh, heat pumps, electric vehicles uh, is a key solution for that. Of course, good installed electricity grid is also important so that good wind conditions from one part in the country can be transmitted to another part of the country where wind is currently not available. Uh, this can also avoid storage and is in many cases lower in cost. Uh, if storage is needed, battery storage is a really good solution. In many, many countries in the world there is not a kind of a longer term lack of solar and wind. In Europe it can happen that we have cold, dark winter days, so where the load is higher and it's dark or at least foggy, so solar is not a good resource, as it is anyway not a good resource in the winter half year, where wind in principle is really, really good, but it can happen that we may have a kind of a lag for maybe a week. Uh, then first of all, other dispatchable, so controllable renewable generation is most relevant, so this is still hydro reservoirs with hydropower, uh, biomass, which is also typically used in the winter half year with combined heat and power. So that means biomass is used uh, for electricity generation and heat generation, in particular Nordic countries, but also in other European countries. And then of course we have specific seasonal storage if we go up to very, very high shares of renewable energy and there it can be so-called power to gas. That means the, the electricity of times when wind and solar are abundantly available is converted to methane, which is chemically the same as today's fossil gas what we use or biomethane from biogas. The point is the total energy system, also renewable energy system, the grid cost is around 10, 15, maximum 20 percent. So if we know the cost of a very highly renewable energy system, then we can just add this 10, 15, 20 percent. It's just recently have been a study from a Fraunhofer Institute in Germany. So it would cost a, mar would cost a marginal extra, maybe less than 3 percent. Uh, of, of, of an energy system if up to, let's say, two weeks of such very, very rarely but existing periods had to be managed, uh, then it can be done. So technological options are there. It needs to be a kind of a policy decision. And honestly, this is only a question if we are beyond 95, 97, 98 percent renewables. Before, this is never a question can be all grid services, what we use from today's energy system, can we have them also in a renewable world, so can be the frequency stabilized, yes it can be, but this is a myth which is brought always up, uh, what's about so-called inertia, so can the system react within seconds on any kind of, of events, yes, this is then possible with so-called synthetic inertia. Uh, how can we uh, can we kept the, the frequency? So in Europe we have a 50 hertz frequency and it need to be exactly 50 hertz. How this can be balanced? We know even from, from battery systems they can even balance it better than today's thermal power plants. Um, what is if, a, is if a system failed due to natural catastrophes, for example, uh, then we need a so-called black start capability. So plants which can start on their own. Also, this is possible. So these are all these different aspects uh, which, which needs to be addressed and which are addressed. We know several countries in the world which are already on 100% renewables or very close. Uh, historically, these are almost all countries uh, which have excellent access to hydropower. We know it in Europe from Norway. Uh, we know it from Iceland. There it's geothermal energy and hydropower. Uh, we know it from Paraguay, from Uruguay, uh, Costa Rica. Costa Rica is a quite interesting country because they also use other forms of renewables uh, to be at typically 99 point uh, something percent. Um, but also larger countries such as Brazil or Canada have renewable energy levels of more than 60, 75 percent. For the case of Denmark it's mainly wind energy. And just in this year, 2018, had been the first time that now for two points in time Germany had been run on 100% renewables. 
And for the case of Germany, it would mean good wind conditions at the coast in the North Sea and the Baltic and sunny con conditions in the southern part of Germany and then it's a mix of solar and wind. There are now up to 100 um, scientific studies uh, in different parts of the world, global studies, country studies, continental studies, regional studies and uh, they conclude it's possible from a technical point of view and from an economic point of view. So feasibility and viability uh, is given.